Hi, folks. Welcome back to the show. I am Matt Logan. So I got to thinking there's a lot of stuff going on in politics. So I asked a Rochester, Minnesota mayor hopeful to be here on this day. And we're going to talk about a few things. I imagine it's going to be a great conversation, don't you think? And uh, wait, hang on a second. I'll get I'll get to you, Brad. But I appreciate you being here. If you're ready, I'm ready. So go ahead and let's strap up that harness because it's time to shake things up, rattle them around. Let's go. Hi, Doe Matt. Glad to be here today. My name is Brad Trahan. I'm a 41 year resident of Rochester, Minnesota. I'm wife of Joni of 25 years and three kids, Brendan and Reese and Peyton. And I uh, appreciate this opportunity to speak with you as I'm uh, pursuing to my candidacy to run for mayor in Rochester, Minnesota this year. Yeah. Hey, Brad, thanks for being here. So, uh, 41 years, I just heard you say you're 29, I thought. Well, I would hope that would be the case. Uh, tomorrow, <laughs> that's going to change a little bit to the old speed limit. But uh, yeah, <laughs> all right, yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, great. So, where'd you come from? Originally from Fairbolt, Minnesota. Sure. Uh, we just uh, an hour west of here, and I moved here in 1981 when I was a freshman. My mother was transferred with U.S. West, uh, her only job, and so our family moved over to Rochester. I was nervous going from a small community to big Rochester. And I've been here ever since, and I absolutely love this community. It's a good community. I grew up in Rochester. I'm just outside of it now, but yeah. grew up in Rochester. Love it. Um, still call it home, obviously, but because that's where I grew up, and I'm still close to it. But, you know, we've seen a lot of things, Brad. I've been really nervous. Um, we talked off camera about what happened in my life 10 years ago. With that tragedy, I have worked really closely with um, a lot of state patrol, a lot of sheriff's departments, a lot of local police, of course, you know, the school resource officers and things like that over the last 10 years. Um, phenomenal people. We're talking about EMS that gets involved in this stuff too, the fire departments and public safety. It has become um, something that I'm embarrassed about frankly, as a Minnesota resident. I was flying into Minneapolis when it was on fire a couple years back. Yeah, and I think um, it's, uh, first of all, on behalf of my family and myself, our sympathy to what you experienced, but I admire your strength and your inspiration to continue to educate the public about your situation. Um, that can-do attitude is really important. The lives you're touching are really important. So uh, thank you for doing that, Matt. Thank, thank you, sir. Um, public safety is so important. Um, it's not easy the job that they do before those times and now what's happened since has it's just gotten worse um you know when i talk about public safety we'll we'll talk police and fire but for instance on the police side right now it's just something that as i'm running for mayor matt it's not a bullet point on my brochure or on my website you know, I've, I have a history of supporting public safety. I've done loss prevention for nine years. I worked with Mayo Clinic Security for six years. Um, I've been there. I've got to know a lot of these police officers, and they truly care about the communities they serve. So when we saw all that go on in the past, they go home, they got, they got significant others that care and love for them. They got kids. They got uh, sisters, brothers, and, and, and moms and dads. And to know, I just can't imagine that feeling for the families that when they say goodbye to their loved one, going to work, being a police officer, they truly don't know if they're going to come back home. Um, very uh, in Rochester, when LGA was going to be cut years back, uh, we formed a rally at City Hall in Rochester. It was a packed room. And I just said to the city council, make sure that if LGA is cut at the state level, don't cut our police department. And it didn't happen. Um, as mentioned, people may know I have a son with severe autism. Reese is now 22 years old. And, you know, I was uh, at one point. Uh, Brad, we live in the country. And there's like flies around, so you know you'll, you'll take care and of that bugs. Just, yeah, 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 I got we, that. So we we it's real. It's real here. It is. Right? I love it, and I and love that's the why that's why we're yeah. Um, 
we're talking about this in particular is because it's a real people, real life, it is. real circumstances. So yeah, the audience has to know that. They know there's bugs. I'm going to wipe yeah, my eyebrow. It is, right. it is. It is. <laughs> it's, it's life. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. When I went over, there's a boy that was missing. Uh, he had autism mm -hmm. and they found him uh, deceased in a pond afterwards yeah. and came back and we brought Project Lifesaver to our community, a $15,000 program that we brought it to help police officers find individuals that are so vulnerable, Matt. They may have Alzheimer's, Down syndrome, autism, but with this technology, our police department can equip them uh, with, they can equip them with technology. It's a transmitter. They can up locate them up to one mile on the ground and 10 miles in the air. And it taken off from the city level. We got uh, worked with another organization to the county level. And then I went to St. Paul and we got an $80,000 grant by NM to help existing agencies that want to improve their program or get new ones on board. So when I talk about my support for public safety, I mean it very much so. And I, I am grateful each and every day for what our law enforcement community does um, to, to keep us safe each and every day in an era right now where it's, uh, it's not so safe in the communities. My son, <clears throat> my baby, moved to Rochester recently. And I'm like, man, this isn't the place I grew up, you know. And so as a, as a dad, especially a dad that has lost a kid, you start looking at things very differently. And I'm like, are you sure you want to move to Rochester? Uh, you know, there's a lot of other places that, like, nobody goes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you, know, there, you know, shooting and killing uh, a mile from his house and, you know, all these other things. And, and it's like, oof, that... Uh, you know, I was making the hair in the back of my neck stand up right now, just thinking about it again. But that's a, it's, it's something that, so here's how I'll say it. When I looked at this and I had conversations with some law enforcement and I said, man, this is a slippery slope that they're trying to go down here to just appease this crowd of whatever that means and looks like and is. And, and I said, uh, I, I really feel like it's going to get out of hand and once that once you're on that edge and that slide starts happening it's hard to recover from that how do we recover from what what's happened how do we recover from that you not only do we need to feel safe we need to be safe and until we empower the law enforcement until we empower the fire departments to do their jobs and EMS and everything else. How do we do that? What's but, the solution? I, I think starting out right off the bat, I think uh, before Mayor Ardell Brady left, he did a great job with the hire of uh, Police Chief Jim Franklin. And, and through the many sessions I've listened to Chief Franklin talk about the five pillars of management, the 21st century policing, and now what you're going to be seeing more in Rochester is what we call relationship type policing. Uh, the community connections that him and his staff are creating, let's say it's the community engagement response team and there's so much others pal uh, you know when they you know they do the cops for you know the, the, the Christmas time shopping when they're out with these kids so I think you know the bottom line is that the relationships with the community are so important and what I really enjoy what I'm seeing right now is they're getting out they're explaining this is what's going on in our community and you know it's a give and take you know when you really think of public safety Matt it is just not a law enforcement matter no. it's a it's a community matter for sure and that's what had people lose focus that sometimes it's just we got to put this all in the law enforcement that's not the case we have to come together we are in a community of one we have to take care of one another so we're neighbors so i, I think when you see what's going on now with the law enforcement how they're i think a cool story was now the Rochester Police and Rochester Public Schools are working together, and they had a situation with their school resource officers as far as how's that contract going to look like. It got approved by the school board on a 4-3 vote, but guess what Chief Franklin and his team did? They took those other three school board members that weren't so sure, they took the time to educate, advocate, and make them aware of it, and when it came back a second time around, Matt, it went 7-0. Yeah. That's the type of relationships that I'm seeing with our current law enforcement community working with the public, the Safe City Nights. I've been to every one of the Safe City Nights, and the community, the neighbors are coming out. They're learning about Gold Cross. They're learning about police. They're learning about fire. They're learning about Olmstead County Sheriff's Office. So if we can keep that going on and just, I think the biggest ask that the police ask us as a community, if you see a police officer, just thank them. Yeah. It's that simple. For sure. It's a very thankless job. It is. I mean, I've seen it, you know, uh, firsthand when I, I've been in hundreds of schools to date and, and hundreds of thousands of people that I've been in front of. And the, the questions that they ask, um, 
when we do Q and A's is, is it's, it's to me, it like blows my mind because I see, I work with them, you know, not directly, but we're in the same events and things. So I, I see how they, what they do, how they interact. And it's, it's a very different thing than most people view it. So they'll ask a question. I'm not going to get into what they ask for questions, but they'll ask a question. And to me, when we're sitting in the same room with, when I'm sitting in the same room with law enforcement and we're having conversations together, I don't see a uniform. I, I see the person and, you know, things like that. But most people, they see that and there's uh, uh, some, it's fear. Some, it's like, I'm afraid, what are they going to do to me because of that narrative, which is largely false. I mean, there's numbers that prove that. To hear that they're going to, that's kind of your thought process and what's happening is to build those relationships. When the police came up to the scene of my daughter's crash, they didn't check to see, you know, is she a Christian? Is she a Muslim? Is she, is she they, nothing. None of that matters to any of them. It doesn't matter to EMS. It doesn't matter to the firefighters. It doesn't matter your political views. It doesn't, any of that doesn't matter. And, I think to me that's something that's in, extremely important for every individual to understand is, is that does not matter to them. You are spot on, Matt. Um, I've had the opportunity, in the I've done it years past, but recently I've ridden twice with the Rochester Police Department with different officers. And I can tell you the calls that we went on, they don't look at anybody any different than you're a human being. They want to resolve a problem. I mean, you think about it, when the police are typically called, there's some type of a crisis going on. So there, you know, sometimes there's already roadblocks going up, but I have been so impressed with the interaction I've had on my ride, ride alongs with the police department because they really care about this community. They want to take care of the situation. What's best for that individual at that time? And um, I think sometimes that gets lost in the focus of what police officers truly are. Um, they're moms and dads, and 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 they and they really care about this community. And just to see how they handle different types of situations, you know what they do best. They listen to the concern, they acknowledge it, and they say, okay, this is how we're going to have to handle it. Some of the concerns that I've seen, and maybe you don't want to weigh in on this, I, I, this is out of the blue. Um, I've seen different videos, uh, Facebook, social media, different posts. Their concern is, is that the laws are kind of kicking some of these career criminals back out into the street, so to speak. Do you want to weigh in on anything like that? Well, yeah, Does that I, make sir, their job it, harder? You know, you always wonder if it will or won't. I, I think they wonder at times they go out there and they try and do the job, and if an arrest is made, is, is the court system going to just kick the person back out in the, into the community? But I think mostly what I'm hearing is as long as the police officers say, hey, I'm no, I know I'm going out, I'm going to do my job, get the paperwork, and then let the court system, let the judicial system handle it as is, it is what it is. They just have to move back on for the next day. Yeah. Um, but I think it is important. We have to, there has to be some accountability. There really has to be. And, and we, understand that, we understand that the court systems get backed up quite a bit. But the last thing we want to do is make an arrest, have them personally just postpone or not postpone at all, and then go back out in the community within a day or two and commit another crime. Because what's going to happen? Is that crime going to escalate? We can't do a should have, could have. But I think I'm very confident our police officers, from the one I've known and spoken with, that, hey, I'm going to do my job. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. At that point, it gets handled off to the judicial system, and we just go from there. But, you know, I, I do think that these police officers know that, hey, when they make a good arrest, and, you know, if they're arresting, they're going to be a good arrest, that they also have their backs covered to make sure that the process is going to be handled fairly. Because here's one thing that people have to understand. Many times there's victims. Yes. And what happens to that victim if a person is arrested, then just put back out in the street with no consequences. Right. We cannot lose focus of victims of these matters. Yeah. So uh, what else on public safety? Let's wrap this up. Yeah. You you know, wrap wait, up. I, let, let me ask you this first, uh, interrupt you. Um, you want to come back? Let's talk about some other stuff. Love to come back if you okay. have me in a future day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's wrap this up. What do you think? I think one thing we really have to look at, Matt, in Rochester is um, one thing is I asked Chief Franklin, I said, what was your biggest surprise coming to Rochester? He said the drug problem. 
Um, if I'm elected mayor, um, that's one thing that I would really want to focus on because we do have a drug problem in Rochester. And if we don't get that maintained, that could lead to all kinds of different types of things. So one of the things I'd really want to focus on, say, what are the tools and the resources we can give our Rochester Police Department to make sure that we get this drug? You're never going to curtail it, but we need to we need to really focus on this drug problem. The only other thing I want to talk to about public safety because it ties in is fire. Um, met with Chief Kurska with the fire department, and I don't think the public realizes is this but as much as our community is annexing out to different farmlands we're going to need two more fire departments in the next 10 years one in northeast rochester and one in northwest what is our city doing today to prepare for the future because 10 years will come by come by really quickly so that's another area i want to focus on is if our chief of uh, fire chief is saying this is what we're going to be needing those are situations that we're going to have to focus on because while your property taxes may stay the same we're already at 1.5 percent of the isl 3 standards in terms of response time from the fire department coming to your home your insurance rates are going to go up. So that's going to be another focus of mine. That's nice. I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, but it makes a lot of sense. Um, because of the growth, actually, uh, you want to do a topic on DMC? That'd be wonderful. Because that, that actually is something that they're really trying to push through and grow the community. So Hot topic. I'd love to talk that. about that. That'd All be a right. great topic. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Matt.